Hello YouTube. So my wife is giving me permission to go ahead and splurge and get some of these buster and punch toggle light switches to go in my office, AKA my nerd room. So uh, I went ahead and bought a three gang kit. This is to order this, you have to go to electricity, custom electricity, and then you have to piece this together. This does not come in a kit. You can buy the one gang switches or the two gang switches as a kit where it comes with the wall plate, the detail kit, and the toggle switches. This one did not come that way. I had to buy them all separately. So all together for this one triple plate was actually kind of expensive, $181 with shipping. I'll post up exactly what I bought so you guys can see it. But basically this is what comes in the kit. You're gonna have your wall plate, the detail kit, and the detail kit is the toggle switch itself that's gonna go right here to turn the light switch on and off. The two screws that hold the plate right here. And then the toggle switch module is essentially just gonna be the regular light switch. And you can kind of see how everything goes together right there. So it's not really gonna to be too terribly difficult to put in. Um, it's just gonna be like switching out a normal light switch. But I'm gonna show you how to do it anyways and show you what it looks like on the wall and also what my impressions are of the overall kit. So as you can see, this little bit here, the toggle switch actually threads onto right here. I'm trying to get a good photo of that or a good video rather. But you'll see what it looks like when it's all attached as well. And then I'll let you know how it feels, if it feels nice and sturdy or what. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step I've done here is turn off the power at the breaker. That is always the first step whenever you're doing any sort of electrical work on any sort of power outlets, light switches, ceiling fans, etc. The next thing I'm doing is removing the switch cover here by removing the six screws that hold it on. There will essentially be two screws per switch and you will see them right at the very front of the faceplate as you see them here. Once all those are off, basically just pry your cover off the wall. I'm gonna switch over to a Phillips head screwdriver so everything stays centered. And then I'm gonna start switching out my switches here. So these come out of the wall pretty easily. Just two screws right here are gonna hold them into the wall box. And this screw is not wanting to back out it looks like, so I'm gonna have to pull this a little. while backing the screw out. And so I don't mix my wiring up, I'm actually gonna do this one at a time. So it's probably hard to see from that angle, but basically these are just screwed on and then we've got the ground over here. So in the kit did come these two screws here. Make sure you've got those handy as well. So according to the installation sheet, the ground is gonna go on the bottom and this is gonna be up. That way, down would be off, up would be on. So I'm gonna keep it in that orientation. That's kind of backwards from this light with switch. So it's a little counterintuitive to what we're looking at here, but that's what the instructions show. So that's how I'm gonna hook it up. I'm gonna keep my wire orientation the same, the red on top, the black on the bottom. Yours may be different, so do it however yours is configured. And what you really want here, even though it wasn't like that previously, is for this to be curved around in a clockwise manner to go around the screw because you're gonna tighten it clockwise, you want it to kind of pull it around the hook as it's tightening up. So I'm just gonna use my screwdriver to bend those over. A pair of pliers may be easier. I don't have a pair of pliers handy, so I'm gonna use what I've got. 
Then we're gonna hook that around our screw here and tighten it up. You can see the way that hooks around there. Just trying to center that on the screws a bit. I'm gonna snug these up without tightening them down too much because I wanna allow it to be able to float when I put my face plate on. So that's one switch down. I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the other two switches here. Okay, so now you have to decide which one of these little inserts you're going to use. So since I have the toggle switch, I'm gonna be using this one. It all, the plate kit also comes with this one here, which is if you have like the dial one. This is the toggle, so we want the up and down movement. So I've got my face blade here. And these just kind of push up in there. They're not really held in by anything. So I think it might actually be a little better if I can just stick them right on there and have them kind of hold in place if they will stay and then put my cover plate over top of that. A little tricky. I'm also trying to hold the screws in my hand as well. There we go. So now we're gonna take our cover plate and put it over top of that. Kind of give it a little wiggle so that everything kind of pops into place the way it should. 
And I'm gonna start with one screw up in this top corner and one screw down on this bottom corner just to kind of hold it in place. And I'm gonna be very careful with my screwdriver so that I do not scratch my stainless steel because that would be a tragedy if you paid all this money for this and then scratched it on the installation. You also do not want to over tighten any one of these screws and warp the stainless. So be very careful of that as well. No over tightening. Okay, so every my whole assembly here needs to come slightly this way because my drywall is kind of messed up on this edge. So I'm gonna try to just give it a little wiggle. Try to convince everything to just slide over just a hair. So what I've gone ahead and done is just went around each one of these screws and kind of tightened it up. It just got them snug, but I didn't over tighten them because again, I don't want to warp this wall plate up. Now it's time to install our detail kit. The detail kit is actually quite simple. For this kit, you've just got the little toggle here. So you're going to bring that up and thread that on. And you don't want to put that on there super tight. You just want it to be snug where it's not going to fall off. And then there's this installation tool here that came with the detail kit and this little screw cover that's going to cover up these six screws that you put on. So we're going to install that. Just thread it in. And now you do want these all to kind of be facing the same direction that way it gives it a nice decorative look. And I'm going to go ahead and go turn my breaker back on because it's getting dark <laughs> and it's getting hard to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go turn my breaker back on so that we can get a good look at these switches. Okay, so I hope you can see this a little bit better now, now that I've got um, the power back on. But... Oh, that's backwards. Yay! So you know what that means, because that's supposed to be off, and it's clearly on. And that's supposed to be on, and it's clearly off. So that means all this is going to come back off. So after spending way more time than I ever should have trying to figure out the light switch positions, uh, what I realized after thinking about it for a moment is that one way the circuit is open and one way the circuit is closed, what I actually had to do was just flip the light switch upside down. So as you can see, the ground is now on the top, and that's gonna be the correct orientation for this switch. Sorry about the confusion, guys. Okay, so now we're back to trying to align these screws here. And really what you want is for them to be aligned perfectly straight up and down, as I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna stick it right in this little cap here. Thread them on, be very careful because the threads are like tiny on these things. Once you've got it perfectly straight up and down, you're good to go. Again, to put your switch on, it's just a matter of threading it into position. So, my first impression of these things is they look pretty cool. Right, it's a pretty cool like old school analog toggle switch. I like it. It does have a little bit of a wobble side to side. I don't know how well you can see that in the video. That sort of irritates me for such an expensive light switch kit. 
that it has a bit of a wobble to it. I would like to see something a little bit more sturdy. This entire light switch assembly inside the wall is plastic. I would have liked to seen something a little heavier duty as well. Also this outer stainless steel bit here, I thought was gonna be nice, thick, heavy stainless steel. And it's really not, it's a little bit on the thin side. Because if you, tight, if you start to tighten those screws just a little bit too far, what you'll get is you'll get a bending effect at the screw. So you kind of can't tighten them down too tight because the stainless steel isn't particularly thick. Now, having said that, I think this is a pretty cool looking little light switch setup. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the hardware on here and show you what it looks like when it's all put on the wall. Okay, so we're all done here. We've got this light switch kit fully installed. It does look pretty good. It looks good on the wall. It's definitely unique. I'm gonna give the room a little bit of extra charm. It's kind of got a steampunk look to it. It's kind of cool. Again, the, uh, the wiggling of that light switch is a little bit annoying. I would have liked to have seen something a little bit tighter. And again, the thickness of the stainless steel, that could have been a little bit thicker, especially for the price. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. I'll try to get some good still shots of it, get all of the fingerprints off of it, and put that at the end of the video. Thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate it.